my name is Abby and welcome to So Homey, a channel where I share a monthly podcast, tutorials, and tips. And all of these are related to both crochet and knitting because I have a passion for both. Back bumps is a crochet term that refers to the back side of a starting chain. The first row is then worked into those back bumps and the result is your fabric has a nice and clean edge along the bottom. So in this video, let me show you how to use this one amazing technique for a cleaner finish, as well as give you the reasons why you should even be interested in using the back bumps. Just recently, I came across this technique of using the back bumps whenever I was researching for the Mary Jane series, which is a collection of three summer-inspired crochet patterns that just released, at least at the time of this video, and they were all designed to be very quick and easy, and they all have their own tutorials. Now, what ties this collection together is the stitch pattern, and that was the Marguerite stitch, or you might also know that as the star stitch. I mentioned whenever I was researching for this um, for this series of patterns, I was using a book that was called the Every Way Stitch Dictionary. And this book is fantastic. Every crocheter should have it on their shelf. It's amazing. But whenever I was looking at the directions, because it gives you a chart of how to actually do the stitch, and then it also gives you the written instructions and some notes. Well, within the notes section, it told me to use the back bumps of the chains and it's going to make a little bit more sense if you actually watch or if you know how to make the marguerite stitch because you're pulling up loops um, along the along the rows and you want a nice and even edge because if you don't use the back bumps then you're going to get very wavy edges just because of the nature of this stitch so it was recommended in this book that I use the back bumps every time that I have a chain. And honestly, I was so impressed by this. It, um, whenever you use the back bumps, the chain stitches or the V's, like the front side, are pushed to the outside. And so you get this nice and straight edge. It doesn't become wavy. And then along the bottom, you get this perfect clean edge that looks exactly like the top of your stitches. So it's identical, like the book was right. I really enjoyed this technique and now I have applied it to another pattern that I'm making, which is a blanket, but I will show you that in just a minute. First, let's go ahead and see what the back bump actually is. So right here, I have gone ahead and made a small chain of stitches and I wanna show you what the back bumps look like. And to do so, we need to start with a chain. And whenever you make the chain, you have a loop on your hook and then you yarn over and pull that yarn through. And whenever you pull the yarn through, you come out with this stitch next to the hook. And if you look further down the chain, you're gonna see these V's. And that is the front side of a chain. So whenever you're looking at it, the V is where the front is and then the chain also has a back side, so whenever you flip it over, you're gonna notice that it looks different. You, you no longer see the Vs, you see little ridges. You can kind of see these little dashed lines, and those are the back bumps. And it's easier if I turn it to the side, so you can see that it is a bump. It's not just a straight piece of yarn, it has a bump. So whenever I refer to the back bumps, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, so now that we know what the chain looks like and where the back bump is, um, I just want to show you the difference between a traditional um, first row whenever you're using the chain and compared to using the back bumps on your very first row. So normally, this is our first stitch, and if I were to make a single crochet into um, this chain uh, as my first row, well, I would skip this first stitch and then I would go into the top V, or top of the V, like right here, and then I would make my single crochet. 
And skipping one is going to give me the height that I need to uh, make that first stitch and that's why you uh, skip that one. And then I would just continue down the row working into the top of the V's. But whenever we do this, it looks totally different from whenever we use the back bumps. So let me show you the difference now. I'm going to show you how to use the back bumps whenever the pattern calls for it. So right here, I've made about 10 chains and that means whenever I'm using the back bumps, I'm going to end up with 10 stitches on the top for my row number one. So this is the first stitch. I have that V. The loop on the hook doesn't count as the first stitch, but this one does, that V right there. So I'm going to flip it over and look for that first back bump. And I see this line of yarn right here, and that's the very first back bump. And then my yarn is coming out from the top. Now I'll tell you a trick on the very first one. You want to not be holding this strand of yarn because if you pull on this one, it's just going to tighten that back bump here. So I already have the loop on my hook and I'm just going to make a single crochet to make this easy. And it's okay if my yarn gets a little loose, we'll tighten it in just a moment. We just want to get our hook through that back bump. Now notice me using my thumbnail trying to push that back bump onto the hook because it can get a little tight if you're not aware that if you pull this, it's going to pull that loop tighter. But now that I have the back bump on my hook, this is what it looks like. And I'm going to go ahead and pull this chain a little bit so that my stitch isn't too loose. So now I'm just going to pull the yarn through like I normally would. And we chain one. Or single crochet one. And then we go on to the next one. You see this is the next back bump. This is the next stitch. So we're just going to go on over to this one and do the same thing. We insert our hook into that back bump and then we'll yarn over like we do to make a single crochet. And there's number two. So we have two stitches and you're just going to continue this process. Um, it's easy if you hold it to the side because you can see those back bumps pretty easily. So you just insert your hook into, oh, I split the yarn. And you must be careful of that because it's a little bit easier to split the yarn whenever you do it this way. But it's not a problem. Just go ahead and make your stitch. And I'll show you one last one. There's that back bump right there. We're going through that. And then if you flip your yarn or your chain over, you'll see the V that I was talking about. You want the V in the front whenever you're crocheting into the back bumps and then you just single crochet so you'll notice whenever you do this you're gonna have the V's still very prominent on the bottom and this is what gives you that nice and clean edge it looks finished uh, you don't have to add that border because you already have the V's right there and it's gonna look identical to the top of a stitch which you can see here and that is how you crochet into the back bump of a chain. So now you might be wondering when is it actually appropriate to use the back bumps and I've mentioned this uh, several times but I just want to be very clear. So first you want to use the back bumps on your very first row because once you chain and then you add your first row you want the first row to be very nice and even and working into those back bumps on your first row is going to give you that nice and even edge. But also, I mentioned previously the marguerite stitch and how um, you pull up loops and the edges. It also helps along the edges because you have to chain two and then pull up those loops. Well, whenever you use the back bumps, it gives you a straighter edge because the tops of the chains are pushed to the front. So you get those V's and they're going to be stacked nice and even, which I have an example to show you. Uh, so this one is the marguerite stitch. Let me make sure I have it. Sorry, this way. So this was my first row and I worked into the back bump so you can see that I have a very nice and even edge and it also looks like the top of 
this um, of this little swatch. But also, if you look along the side, it's very straight, which this one probably needs to be blocked, but it's straight. And I don't know if you can see this, but uh, the chains, you can see the Vs along the side. Uh, the chains right there are what give it that nice and straight edge. And you get that by working into the back bumps. So those are just a couple of examples of when to use the back bumps. Now that we know what the back bump looks like, how to use the back bump, when to use the back bump, now I want to give you a few reasons of why you should consider even using the back bumps. So number one is that the bottom row is going to look identical to the top row. Now this is very important for projects that you don't want to add a border or that you're not going to add a finishing edge. And I say that that's important because um, as you crochet in rows, uh, the two sides are going to look the same. But whenever you get to the top, um, you're going to get the V's because it's going to be the top of those stitches. What well, the bottom, if you use the traditional way, it's not going to look the same as the top. So I'm very symmetrical and I think that working into the back bumps, since it pushes the V's or the top of the stitches to the front, um, it just gives it a nicer look because it's going to look the same as the top. Um, so the top and bottom will match and then the sides will match, I guess is really what I mean. And I actually have an example to show you. So this is a pattern that I'm working on and it's going to be a blanket. I just want to show you real quick, um, I have a just the beginning of it. So I want to see if you can tell which way is the top and which way is the bottom. Um, and you probably wouldn't know unless I told you, but let me see, this edge right here is actually the bottom. This is exactly where I started and I worked into the back bumps. So whenever you look at the fabric, it just blends right into those next stitches. So this is just an example of how your edges can look a lot neater and how it just blends right into the actual pattern. So that's one reason for using the back bumps. So another reason to use the back bumps is because it makes seaming so much easier. <laughs> the, since the stitches are pushed to the front, the stitches are more defined. You can see the V, so you know exactly where to put your needle. And that makes seaming so much easier. What's also great is that the seaming technique doesn't matter. You can use the whip stitch, you can use the mattress stitch, you could use, you know, whatever seaming technique is your favorite. It's gonna be so much easier whenever you can see that bottom edge. And I used the whip stitch in the Mary Jane series and it worked beautifully whenever I got to that bottom row of stitches because I could just uh, whip them right out. It was just exactly like I would be doing it at the top. So I love this way. So my third and final reason for this video on why you should use the back bumps is that it makes adding embellishments a lot easier. So fringe is an example of an embellishment and it's so much easier knowing where to put your crochet hook because for fringe, um, at least the type of fringe that I'm talking about is where you're actually cutting the pieces of fringe and then you add it to the blanket. And it's easy to add it to the blanket with a crochet hook. So that's kind of what I'm talking about here. And it's easier whenever you have well-defined stitches. If you have the back bumps worked into, then the top of the chain is going to be on the edge. It's going to be easier to see where to put the fringe and it's going to look a little bit more even the way that you spread your fringe out because you don't risk accidentally skipping something or skipping a stitch like you would possibly if you just used the traditional way of working into a chain. So ribbing is another example of an embellishment that I'm talking about. And if you use the back bumps, it's going to be so easy to add ribbing, especially the way that Tony Lipsy shows you from Teal Yarn Crafts. I'll add a link and a little card up here so you know which tutorial I'm talking about. It's really fantastic. I used it for a cardigan that I made actually and it was so helpful. It's just going to be a lot easier to add ribbing this way 
if you work into the back bumps of the chain. And this technique, of course, was used, at least in this tutorial, it was used for the edge of a hat, and I used it for the edge of a cardigan. So it could really be applied to many different types of projects. It could be even applied to a blanket. So that's why I say it's gonna be much easier if you use the back bumps whenever you add ribbing in this style. So basically in this section, I just meant that just being able to see where those stitches are makes it so much easier for the eye whenever you're trying to add, you know, say fringe or ribbing. So I decided to throw this reason to use the back bump technique as a bonus because I got to thinking about number two, uh, which was making the seaming easier. Um, and this one kind of goes along with that. So I just wanted to point it out to you guys. So the reason is because whenever you seam the two pieces of fabric together, whenever you use the back bump technique, you're not gonna get any large gaps along that seam. And to illustrate this point, I have the two swatches that I seamed together using the mattress stitch this time. And the swatch at the top was used or was made using the uh, chain traditionally. So the first row was worked into the top of the chain. Now the bottom swatch was made using or working the first row into the back bumps. And whenever I lift this piece of fabric up, you'll notice that right here is very um, gappy. <laughs> There's a lot of gaps. And that is just because whenever you crochet into the top of the chain, if your chain is a little bit loose, you're going to get gaps because it, there's just more space between there. And whenever you go to seam two pieces of fabric together, you're going to get large gaps on both sides. So I figured out that I actually prefer to use the back bump technique whenever I'm seaming because I don't get those large gaps anymore. And I just recently found that out, actually, and I wanted to share that with you, so I decided to throw that in there as an extra tip. Now I want to finish this video off by leaving you with a few tips for working into the back bumps. So tip number one is to use a hook size that is one size larger than what the pattern calls for for the starting chain. But then, whenever you get to row number one, start using the crochet hook that you're actually going to be using for the pattern. Now, why you do this is because with the starting chain, it's going to be bigger since your hook size was a little bit bigger. And then whenever you go to work the first row into the back bumps, it's going to be easier to pull up those back bumps since it's slightly larger. Plus, it's going to help your edges not to curl. So tip number two is to keep the working yarn very loose or you might even just let go of it whenever you're making your first stitch into that back bump. Now, I say this because whenever I first did this, I was pulling that yarn a little too tight because I thought I needed to tighten up that chain. Well, whenever you pull that yarn, it's going to make that back bump even tighter and it's going to be next to impossible to actually get your, your crochet hook into that back bump. So if you just drop the working yarn for a minute, put your hook through the back bump, then you can pull the yarn tight so that that chain isn't too loose. Uh, that's what I would recommend because otherwise, if you tighten it too much, then you're just gonna be frustrated and you might have to actually undo that chain, redo it so that you can actually work into that back bump. And then my final tip is to remind you that you should be chaining the exact number of stitches that you need for the very first row. So. Traditionally, if you're using a chain, and let's just use a single crochet as an example, you're going to, after you have your, your chains, for row number one, you're going to be skipping one chain and working into that next chain. Well, whenever you work into the back bumps, you're working into every single chain. So you don't have to chain an extra one because you're gonna end up with an extra stitch. So just make sure that you chain the exact number of stitches that you need for row number one of your project. That concludes the technique of back bumps in crochet. I hope that you found this helpful, and if you did, please hit that like button and consider subscribing to my channel. Also, check out my newsletter. I have a link in the description box below for you guys, and 
I want to say thank you again for joining me on this lovely day, and I will see you guys in the next video.